DC, right on. Well, Kristen, we're going to get Renee on and off the call because he's, uh, he's uh, moderating or emceeing a big event. So we'll bring you in in about 15 minutes. You cool, cool. with that? Yeah, sounds great. Sweet. Renee. And I, I have my wingman and partner in crime, Todd Booksman, <laughs> to, you know, keep this call on track. What's up, Todd? Hey, not much. It's always exciting to be here with you and especially with our two special guests. This is going to be a great morning. Cool. So, so Todd, you know, you, you know, we've got a lot of ideas that are going to get shared. Let's, if you could, one, keep an eye in chat. So anybody who's on Facebook and you have questions, you can ask those questions and Todd, will, Todd or myself will bring them in. And then let's try to make sure, you know, from a coaching and a win by noon perspective, you're, you know, you're giving everybody feedback and ideas so they can take action. Sound good, bro? You know, it sounds good. We're wrapping up Q3 and heading to Q4. So it's perfect time for that conversation. Right on. So, so let's bring in Renee Rodriguez. Uh, Renee, um, your <coughs> video did go away. So if, there you are. What's up, brother? How are you guys doing? We're doing good. So thanks for making time to jump in here before you go on stage. And what do you go on stage, like in a half hour? Well, we got an all day thing uh, called Elevate Sales Summit, where we got, it's our fourth year. We've got over 1,200 people coming here. It's gonna be fun. So and where are you at? You're in Vegas? In San Diego. In fact, Kristen was up oh, there last right. year with me. Why aren't you here? Event. Uh, I had an event with Freddie yesterday and I'm exhausted. <laughs> so you know, That's the, usually when you start traveling is when you're exhausted. Yeah. But Elevate was awesome. So. <clears throat> Yeah, so guys, put that on your calendar for next year. It's an awesome <laughs> event. Uh, Renee, feel free to plug that as we, we go. So guys, I asked Renee Rodriguez to join today's call because we just sold out Amplify in Seattle in January oh, uh, with, just, with just a rock star cast of mortgage coach um, icons. <laughs> so uh, let me look, look at the list who's going to be at this event. Uh, we got Josh Metal. We, we have uh, Shannon O'Hare. We've got Rick Shear, we got Kelly Zitlow, we got Dan Keller, who might join us in a few minutes, uh, Jeremy Forcier, uh, Denise Donahue, Tony Blodgett, and Ryan Hill. And then we just heard from Todd Bookspan that Todd is going to join that event too. So, you know, I am getting behind that event because I just think it's so important that a local referral based mortgage <laughs> professional builds a personal brand. And in order to build a personal brand, you need to know what your brand is and you need to know how to communicate it in multiple channels. You know, when you're on stage doing a lunch and learn, you need to show up on brand and tell a story that connects people to you in a unique way. Mm -hmm. And when you're on social media, you need to do that. So I just think for the entire year of 2020, Renee Rodriguez is going to be an important part of the mortgage coach community. And, and my hope is that we have this community within a community. We've got you know, just like Todd Bookspan, we've got the win by noon community within the mortgage coach community. We're, we're going to have the Amplify community within the mortgage coach community. So, so Renee, why don't you um, just, I, I don't, I don't want to get into a pitch on the event because we've no. sold out, um, you know, we've sold out uh, Seattle. I know we're going to do another one in, in um, Portland, and I know we're going to do more throughout the year. So guys, if you do want to come to that, let us know down below or email me at David Mortgage Coach or go to Renee's website and get on the list. But Renee, share some, um, I don't know, just speaking tips, influence tips, leadership tips. What's on your mind? What are some <coughs> ideas that we should think about? Sure. And um, first of all, thank you. I, I think it's um, this journey, even just uh, together with you, Dave, over the last 14 years has been fun. And uh, it's just, it's fun to find something that really is resonating with people. And so I, I guess I'll share with this. I had a conversation with Rick Shear yesterday. He called me after he signed up and he said, <clears throat> I, can I go earlier? Cause I have, I'm doing a complete rebrand of, of a project that I'm working on. And my team is, is having me do videos and <clears throat> I have a feeling my video is going to change after the workshop. I said, yeah, it's probably gonna change a lot. And he said, I, I don't know if I can wait. I said, well, call me. And he called me yesterday and I said, okay, let's just go through this. And I, t I told him, <clears throat> Rick, we're going to do this the fast way because I'm just going to do part of it for you. And so I, 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 you and I shared that story yesterday and you thought maybe just the process might be something that might be valuable because I think that the, the process that, that I'm trying to communicate is something that I do want everybody to have. I have a, I have a personal mission that, that I think that um, everybody has a story and 
whether you're selling something or just being a parent, it doesn't matter. You have a story and stories are what influence behavior and what, what, when we have ideas and we can't communicate them, it's, it's frustrating. And I, in fact, I did this as my topic for my second TED talk this last Saturday, which hopefully I'll, I'll share with you guys <clears throat> when it, when it uh, finally uh, comes out. But he said, I said, Todd, let's just go through the process. And I said, what do you do? Or not Todd, excuse me, uh, Rick, I go, what do you do? And he said, well, we offer mortgage lending. I said, great. I said, well, what makes you unique? And he said, well, <clears throat> we really like to do a mortgage plan where we consider ourselves mortgage planners. We sit down and we listen and we talk and we, we take, you know, we really take in what people are, are, are doing. And he went through that whole piece. And I said, so you're, you're a mortgage lender that likes to listen and offer more than just a, uh, a transaction. You like to listen and plan and the sort of the mortgage planning concept. And he said, yeah, I said, so let me ask you the tough question. Is that unique or is that cliche? And the next words out of his mouth were shit. I said, yes, it's not unique. I said, but that's okay. That, that's, it's still what you do. And there, there are very few unique things in any marketplace. There are not many new inventions. Most patents, I mean, are, are, there's not many few patent monopolies out there. And so we're all kind of <clears throat> struggling to fight over certain value propositions. And over time, they become overused. I say overused, but what I like to say is miscommunicated. And so what makes the value proposition unique isn't the words that we say, it's what's said prior to that. And I said, so I said, Todd, here's, here's, the, here's what needs to happen. I said, you chose that as your value proposition for a reason. And the reason is, is because they reflect some sort of value system that you have already. Would you agree? And he said, yeah, yes, absolutely. I said, so your value proposition reflects your values because you didn't choose lowest price. You didn't choose great marketing. You didn't choose um, a product or, you know, lots of products you can choose from. You, for some reason, chose that you want to care and listen and offer bigger ideas and guidance. <clears throat> and he said, yeah. I said, so those values that are yours, I'm going to tell you a little secret. They didn't come recently. They weren't formed recently. They were formed when you were a kid. And that's the thing that I, I want people to understand is that what we are already doing now is a reflection of our values and our values were formed when we were a kid. And in those child experiences is what, where resides the gold of our story. And I said, so tell me about where you learned that. And he sat there for a minute <clears throat> and he had kind of this moment of, oh, it was my mother. And he begins to tell me about his mother and he goes, you know, we, we grew up with, without any money. We were poor. We were, uh, uh, lived, uh, uh, on welfare. We were paid, you know, the typical paycheck to paycheck. And we never thought about owning our own home. And I remember when we went and met with, and he told me sort of this very surface story where he said, you know, you know, we didn't have much money. We were on, on, on welfare. And my mother went to go and, uh, get a loan, but the, the lady was just really amazing. And I said, okay, hold on a second. Tell me the actual story. And he, then he went a little deeper and I said, no, 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 surface. I go, I want to hear what it felt like in the elevator ride going up to meet this lender when you were going there for your first time. And it was that moment that he, he went back to that specific story, that specific day that his whole demeanor changed, even over the phone. And he said, I remember we were going there and the moment she opened the door, it was like she was so welcoming and so awesome. And he proceeded to tell me this, <clears throat> the story. And I said, Todd, I said, there's your video. And he said, what do you mean? I said, I'm just going to change the sequence of how you said it. I'm going to give it back to you. And I, I asked him for some creative freedom and I'm still going to take some creative freedom because the, the specifics of the story, uh, the, the exact detail of the story isn't important in, in this concept. Um, when he tells it, the specifics will be important, but he has those already. And I said, so, you know, in your video, <clears throat> your video is very simple is instead of saying, hi, my name is uh, Rick and I own a mortgage company and we offer this kind of service and we really want to be different because of this. I don't think that's what really gets to people. Instead, a story could be, you know, I remember as a kid growing up, probably like a lot of people watching this video, we didn't have much money. And it's important that we say that, by the way. I always tell people, because a lot of people grew up poor. And the moment we make poor a sob story, no one's listening anymore. But if you just put that little qualifying language in there of saying, you know, probably like a lot of people listening right here, I didn't grow up with much, with, with much money. You know, we, we, lived, we were on welfare and we were the typical paycheck to paycheck sort of family. And our conversations around money were stressful. In fact, we didn't even have them. And so I didn't have any guidance on how to earn money, how to spend money, how to save money. And so the, the concept of money was a very foreign thing to me growing up. 
And I remember my mother around 18 years old, you know, just said that she really wanted to get us into a home. And the look on her face was what really got me. Because the, immediately the conversation around the dinner table changed where it became stressful and almost this feeling of shame that maybe we didn't do the right things or why was it easy for everyone else when it was so hard for us? And I'll never forget the day she asked me to go with her to her first meeting to see if she qualified. We were in the elevator, we were quiet, we were nervous. I too felt a sense of shame, didn't know what was going on in this feeling of just knowing that there's probably no way this is gonna happen, so this feeling of hopelessness. But the moment this lady opened the door to her office, she had this amazing smile, but it was that kind of smile that was non-judgmental. It was a smile that, that made you feel equal, but really for us, it gave us a sense of hope that maybe there was something that we could do here. But really what I'll never forget was the first thing she told us. She said, Mr. and Mrs. Shear, or Mr. Shear, or whatever, he, whatever they said at the time, I want to assure you one thing. We're going to go as slow as needed, take as long as needed to ensure that you understand every step of this process. And the moment she said that, I, I was 18 years old. I didn't know what I wanted to do in my life, but I, I did know I admired her, and I wanted to make people feel the way that she just made me feel. And so when my partner Rick called me, <clears throat> A rich called me, he's a partner, and said, we wanted to start this new project. We immediately realized that we shared the same values and similar stories. And we vowed to ourselves that we would build a vision, build a company that shared those same values to make people feel the way that we felt when we were growing up and so on and so forth. The rest of it's easy after you do that part because once you capture that story, it builds substance to the value proposition. Value propositions without a story are empty and they're repeated and they're memorized and overused. But it's not the value proposition that differentiates. It's the story that gives substance to that value proposition when you're in a hyper competitive market. Okay. That, that's sort of where we went with that. Love, love that, man. I love, I love the story. And, you know, my hope for everybody, you know, that's part of the mortgage coach community, you guys are all going to be armed with, you know, tactics and skills and technology. And those are, those things are important. I mean, you can't kind of back up a story unless you can then deliver. I mean, execution is important, but getting clear on your personal story is, is really most important. Uh, and Renee, I mean, you've, you've helped me. Just working with you has improved how I show up um, when I'm telling the mortgage coach story. So thank you, brother. And, uh, and, and guys, you know, going to Amplify isn't something that everybody can do, um, you know, but being on this call, hearing what Renee just said, and then working on your personal story and how you integrate that into you know, your conversations so that you're unique, you're different, you're building a brand. Um, everybody can do that. So Todd Bookspan, any questions or comments or anything you wanna talk about on that before we let Renee go get on stage and do his thing in uh, San Diego? I'd, I'd love to hear, Renee, what, what happens if someone doesn't feel like they have a compelling story like what if someone's like, well, I didn't, I didn't grow up poor. I mean, how would you, how would you then help them look for that story? Uh, and that's probably one of the most common things that I hear. And I, and personally, and honestly, it's how I, how I felt going through this process uh, 20 years ago. And it was, I, I remember my first time I was in a room storytelling. And here's the thing, everything that you do is a story. That's, that's the thing that, that I guess I would say part of my mission is about is helping people understand and be present where you can have a, a, a walk from your hotel lobby to your hotel room, there are stories happening, there are things happening, there are thoughts there, you know, people walking by, life is going on. And when you understand how to be present to capture that, there's always a lesson at the end of it. But I remember the first time I went through uh, an event like this and I was sitting around the room, I, I had my mother in the room as a former nun. We used to be harassed by the Ku Klux Klan, by the KGB and the CIA and the FBI for, for work she was doing in Cuba. I had another guy over here that invented something. I had a guy that ran six companies. I had another guy over here that was trained by Tony Robbins personally. And, you know, all of these things. And I'm going, I'm 20 some years old. I'm going, I haven't done shit. I have no story to tell. I have nothing. And I, and I literally started going through this panic. And the facilitator just looked at me and I, because I went and took him in the hallway. And I said, I, and we had seven minutes to create our presentation. I said, I got nothing. I literally ha probably have a tear in my eye. And he just looks at me and he goes, you have four more minutes. And he turns around and leaves. And it forced me to go back and rethink, go back and actually think about things that I had been through. And it forced me to, to realize that I had actually been through a lot of things. And so we all have a story. 
regardless, even people with the t- tons of money have amazing stories because I guarantee I know people, friends of mine that are for trust fund babies that hate the fact that they have money and they will shed tears over the fact that every day feels meaningless. Every day feels like their life doesn't matter. Every day feels like that what they're doing isn't contributing because they are not getting me with these assets. Oops. Hello. Hey, if whoever can mute themselves. Sorry about that, Renee. No worries. No worries. <clears throat> and so it's, it's all of those things contribute to what it is that we're doing. And so for someone that feels like they don't have a story, first of all, I totally get it and I understand. But part of what you have to do is start learning to think back and reflect on things you have been through. Your parents taught you lessons. If you didn't have parents, there's a story. If you did have parents and they were assholes, there's a story. If you had parents and they were amazing, there's lessons that they taught you. If you uh, didn't have parents, maybe you had coaches, there's stories there. You had teachers that you probably loved, those are stories. You had teachers you hated, those are stories. You had friends that were awesome, told you things and made you do things that were stupid, those are stories. But when you understand the stories that that decide, define who you are, it's there. But the trick to it is to pay attention to what you do now. And when you look at what you do now, you look at typically what you talk about. And if we're talking about it from a business context, what are your value propositions? What are on your videos? What are the things you're most proud of that you feel that you share with your clients and, and your referral partners? Then ask yourself, why did I choose those? And then look back. And I'm, I'm going to tell you right away, you're going to go back a couple years. So you're going to go back to the beginning of your career. You got to go back further. Now, to answer a question that I know it's going through people's minds, I'm not saying to always share childhood stories in a business environment. I'm not saying that. I am saying that those times that you do are extremely powerful. One of the things that we teach is just like playing golf, you have multiple clubs in your golf bag for multiple shots that you're trying to take. These are different clubs for different moments. You have to have a club where you, you tell a childhood story. And Keller and I have had this conversation a whole, whole bunch because he's got this really good driver club where he says, this is how much I produce. This is what I've made last year. This is what I did before. And this is what I did. And if you're not doing it, you're not doing anything. And, and that's an important club to have in the bag for certain environments. You're raising money. You're dealing in from an authoritative perspective. But if you're trying to connect, it's the wrong club, right? You got to pull out a different club. You got to be able to share something. Somebody was asking me yesterday because we go on stage. We've got about 1,200 people coming. And they say, how do you connect on stage? And I said, it sucks. I said, you're, first of all, you're on the stage. You're elevated. And you got 30 feet of nothing till the, ch- the chairs begin. And then you got lights shining in your eyes. I like to walk audiences. Not always possible. Feedback from the microphones, camera, lighting, all that stuff. And I told them, I said, the only way in those situations that you can actually connect is to share of yourself. Somebody says, I don't like talking about myself. I'm not saying talk about yourself. I'm saying share of yourself. And sometimes you got to share something that's not comfortable but it's something that people can relate to as long as there's a message of value or what we call the tie down at the end to make it mean something. And the tie down is basically the question that says what this means to you is. So if I share something, a story, and it can be surface, statistics, story, a joke, a quote, uh, something that's happening in the marketplace, a childhood story, whatever it is, followed by the reason I share that with you is, is this. It's the big, I think it's the last thing I'll say is the biggest mistake I see right now mortgage people do is though, go on social media and they'll say the Fed dropped the rate by half a point. And everyone's going, I don't know what that means. But most people will say, oh, my, my mortgage rates must have come down then. And what they didn't do is fill in the gap of what that means to you is. And so if you can even be smarter and predict what people are thinking, jump out ahead and predict, say, I know people are probably worried about mortgage rates, but let me explain what it actually means to you in this process, what it means to you in the investment process or in the mortgage process or in these. And then let's talk about that. But if they can just bridge that gap, all of a sudden value is there. All right, Renee, you crush it. I want to let you get on stage. I love this is perfect transition to bring Kristen Messerly in because you talked about pre-framing, you know, like to just tell the what without telling the why or to pre-frame it is, is just a big miss. So, so Kristen, you were a, a judge at uh, Digital Mortgage this week. And by the way, guys, Kristen crushed it. I'm not going to have Kristen tell how much she crushed it. Um, but did you have fun, Kristen? I had so much fun. Um, I will also say real quick that I have been to an Amplify event and it was very transformative. So, um, but definitely, I mean, we talked about story. I talked about story on almost every demo that came up. So yeah, this definitely ties together. 
Yeah, it definitely ties together. For anyone that wants to be at any of the Amplify events from the Mortgage Coach community, you know, go to the site, email me, Dave at Mortgage Coach, comment below. Um, you know, we're very excited. Renee and I are very excited about creating this community within a community and getting um, not just Mortgage Coach rock stars, but anybody that wants to invest and being their, you know, the best influencer and leader they can be. We we want to we want to make the make you part of what we're doing with Amplify. Uh, Renee, are you have to jump now? Or are you going to be on for a few minutes? Just so uh, I know. I want to I want to hear a couple of things, and, and then I'm I'm going to be multitasking, but I'm I'm going to listen in for sure for a little bit. Okay, so so guys, just to paint the picture, there's over a thousand mortgage executives at Digital Mortgage. You know, it's in Vegas. It's an incredibly highly produced, well done event at the Wynn Hotel. So the venue is amazing. The place is amazing. It's the C-suite of the top innovators in the mortgage industry. And then, of course, Kristen Messerly is one of three judges. So people are paying, you know, like $15,000 to demo their software for seven minutes. And Kristen, Julian Hebron, and um, um, Decker. Jesse. Jesse Decker. How do you forget that name? It's such a great name. You know, and Jesse Decker are just like, each of you had about, what, 20 to 30 seconds to give feedback? Yeah. So, so Kristen, what takeaways did you have from that experience that might be valuable to the mortgage coach community? Well, uh, I think the biggest thing was that a lot of people were trying to communicate a lot of features in a short period of time. I mean, they, like you said, they had seven minutes or eight minutes to, to demo. And so a lot of times things would get lost or feel chaotic unless they were telling a story. So that's why this is so relevant to think about some of the, the things that, um, that Renee was talking about. But so when you're communicating any kind of value or really, it doesn't matter how much time you have, you wanna be very simple and clear and tell, tell the story from the user's perspective. Or so like for some demos that did a really good job, they'd say, all right, now I'm going to be in the, or I'm going to sit in as an underwriter now, or they'd have another person that would be the underwriter and then they would be the comment, they'd be commentating or doing commentary alongside them or, uh, or say, okay, now this is what the borrower is going to experience. They'd step inside the shoes of the borrower or the loan officer. And so by doing that, you're able to seamlessly follow everything that they're doing. And yeah, some things are going to get left out because that's not the, that's not the point of this story right now, but it's so much easier to engage. And, um, and then setting up that story as here's the situation, here's the complication that we're trying to solve, and here's the solution. You know, so being very like following that kind of storyline um, was really critical to being able to do a, a um, do a good job with the demo. I think. Yeah, no, no doubt. And I think in so many ways, this is not unsimilar to when you're trying to win the trust and respect of a realtor. Yeah. And there's just you know there's value props that you have. And there's demos that you give, you know, and it's not a demo in the sense of click here, click there, and let me show you how to use a piece of technology. But it is, you know, you're, you're making a big statement, I'm solving a problem. And then let me show you how I'm solving that problem. And it's concise and it's compelling. Uh, and what, real quick, what were the criteria? I know you guys had like a matrix that yeah. you had to score people, because I, I think there's some value in any yeah. business to just think about this metrics. Definitely. I completely agree. So we were looking at the market need and I think it was opportunity, but yeah, market need. Um, and then secondly, the op- ability to succeed. So, or pro- probability of success. So that was based on like wh- who was investing and what kind of backing they had, what kind of clients they had, metrics of success uh, they could share. And then third was the innovative qualities uh, how innovative was the product? And then um, fourth was, what was? Showmanship. Fourth? Showmanship was one of them, but there was another one too right before that. And it, oh, oh gosh, my <laughs> most important one to me uh, was the user experience. So um, the, those were the qualities. So we would score all of that be, um, and then tally that up to give the score for each demo. And then share, yeah, 20 to 30 seconds of feedback. So it was very intense, but so fun. Yeah, and, 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 and when you and I were talking about that after the event, and then you were telling me how like everything I'm looking at now and I'm putting a matrix around it, 
And it, it just made me think like mortgage coach community, you, you should have your own matrix of how do you show up for realtors? And you know, it's how much, how present was I? That should be one of those things. Was I, you know, was I present? Did I listen? Because remember, you know, when you look at what it takes to be a successful salesperson, it is asking great questions, tailoring your advice, and then it's teaching. Did I teach something? You know, um, did I leadership? Did I show up and, and provide some leadership in the conversation? So I'm not gonna, you know, give you guys all what are the five metrics that be part of your realtor conversations or part of your borrower conversations. I'm just gonna push everybody, come up with the metrics that you judge yourself on because I thought it was super smart. And uh, by the way, again, you did a, I mean, all three of you judges did a great job. So, so Kristen, I know you got to go and present one more question. And then of course you want to share anything else, feel free, yeah. but just as, as a technology innovator and you're an advocate for families, you know, you're always about, you know, for the consumer first perspective, mm -hmm. what, what were your just takeaways in terms of the state of mortgage technology and innovation in the industry. Any any takeaways there? Uh, I was excited to see that a lot of people were focusing on the borrower experience and they were thinking about, uh, so I guess the, the biggest thing that I would like to see from everyone is being able to understand and communicate the perspective of the borrower's journey and the borrower experience all the way through and understanding their values through that process. So being able to demonstrate this value for transparency and options and, you know, ease of communication and, um, and that relationship and, and convenience and those types of, of values, which I saw a, a direction, not from everyone, certainly, but I was pleasantly, um, I, I was impressed by at least some of the demos and how there is a push for valuing that, uh, the borrower experience and empowering the borrower to make the, the decisions for themselves and be able to have more control in that process. Because I think, David, at least you and I have been talking about this for a long time, that shift from where the loan officer was the center of the transaction to now the consumer being the center of the transaction. And I think people are starting to recognize that and design their technology around that. Um, so I, I think moving forward, just making sure that we're really emphasizing um, that, that fact, that shift, and um, making sure that we're hearing from the borrower and um, designing our experiences and um, technology around that uh, borrower's values and experience. Yeah. And Chris, by the way, do you have like five minutes or do you need yeah, to go yeah, right I, at 8 45, so we're good. Okay, so I want to weave in one of my takeaways and see if you feel the same way I do or if you have, you know, kind of your perspective around it. But, you know, this is the third year I've been going to this. And, you know, as I see it, while well, the digital shift, you know, like the article you and I wrote started when the iPhone came out, you know, 2007, boom. But the real mortgage technology race started in 2016 when the rocket went off. And, and so this is the third year that this event's happened. I've been at every, every one of them. And I feel like digital mortgage 101 check. It's like, it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody either has digital mortgage 101 or they're implementing it. And so we've, we've really arrived. Like at this particular digital event, I was like, okay, we've arrived. And now it's like the application, no, not everybody's implemented it well. And there's a lot of room for improvement in the point of sale experience, but it's like, that's not a place to differentiate. And I really came to two places. I mean, one of them, because I'm Mr. Mortgage Coach was, okay, we've got an app, now what? And it's differentiating with advice and value, which you know aligns really well with Mortgage Coach. But then I really came to my, my biggest epitome of all, because adoption, adoption, how do we get people to change? Like to really pull off this consumer experience with technology, it's about training. And it's about, you know, really as an industry getting serious about how do we, how do we show leadership and how do we build skills so that our people are using technology effectively. And, and, and I felt like that wasn't even talked about. I mean, it was talked about like it's a problem, but nobody except for capacity 
And maybe you saw someone else that's really addressing that. I mean, what are yeah. your thoughts? No, I completely agree. That's definitely being overlooked and almost skipped over. Just like, okay, well, the I don't know. And I, I do think sometimes it's easy to get caught up in, can we have the best technology instead of, can we have the best experience? And, um, and I think even talking to Quicken, actually, they talk about how their number one priority was adding tools, educational tools, and, um, and like, I don't know, the relationship factor amidst the digital experience as well. And so it wasn't so much, I don't know, I think we, we want to have the best digital experience possible, but I do think that the priority needs to be around, are we empowering the consumer? And in doing that, you have to have training for loan officers to adopt that technology and not just make it something that's available and that the consumer has to or it needs to request or something, you know, I mean, it needs to be a, a seamless process that everyone utilizes. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, and again, at Mortgage Coach, that's something we're very serious about. It's why I do these calls every Tuesday, every Friday. Uh, it's why I'm building out this black belt in mortgage advice series. I, I just released my number two interview with Craig Strett on what does it mean to be a black belt in advice? And, and that is one of the essential pieces. Like if you want to have the next 10 years of your career be better than the last 10 years, yes, you need to use technology, but probably more importantly than that, you need to train and build the skills to use it appropriately. Um, so Krista, before you go, anything else you want to share with the community or any questions for anybody else on the call? I don't think so. I just want to, yeah, congratulate you on how much you guys are pushing that, that training and offering that training because yeah, now, the more I think about it now, it, it really was missing from every single demo, I think. And um, right? so, yeah, I think that's a, that's a really important factor for thinking about adoption. Like not, it's not just about choosing which technology or what your tech stack looks like. It's about how do I get my team to adopt this and, and it be a, a, something that people are seeing as an integral part of their, their lives and their, um, the way that they work with customers. So. Yeah, because I, when I was kind of journaling and just taking my notes, I was like, how powerful would it have been if people would have told the stories they told in the seven minutes and then actually weaved in. And this is how we actually get human beings to adopt and use this just like a minute, you know, just like we, we need to think constantly like, OK, we have this tech, we've installed it. What are we doing in the technology to get it used? And then what are we doing outside the technology to get it used? in ways that are appropriate. And that's, I do believe for anyone who's listening to this and you're in the C-suite, um, you wanna have a competitive differentiation in the marketplace, that is where you get it. Because Digital Mortgage 101, the companies are out there. Um, we're certainly part of that tech stack, but you can buy the tech, you can turn on the tech. If the tech is not being used appropriately in the consumer experience, it's not a competitive advantage. Uh, so go ahead. One more thing I want to say, I, um, I did notice how few of the demos that were focused on the bar experience had um, educational tools integrated or education integrated in any way. And I think that's another really huge reason why everyone needs to think about how they integrate mortgage coach into um, everything that they do. Because I, I think we know that especially millennial next gen consumers want education and transparency and so uh, there's just no reason why you wouldn't include that. And that's uh, one of the big values that I thought were not properly uh, communicated in a lot of the tech demos out there as well. Yeah. And not to, you know, well, I, again, it's, I, Mr. Mortgage Coach, I could do it. I, I love that top of mind integration. And, yes. and, I, and I thought the way they told their story within the life of a loan officer and then, you know, Mortgage Coach was one of five of those things. I thought, I don't know, I think you gave them a pretty high score. Yeah, that, that was uh, one of the highest scores I gave. They did so well. And, and yeah, it definitely gave a huge shout out to Mortgage Coach. And I was like, oh, <laughs> there's Mortgage Coach. <laughs> and you could watch them yeah. open it and their phone. And yeah, it was really cool. It was seamless. Yeah, it was cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, hey, Kristen, you are welcome to stay on as much of this call as you want. Um, but I also know um, that... I, I don't know if you're speaking, but you're somewhere and you told me you had 30 minutes. Yeah, I just have a meeting, but I moved it just a little bit. So thanks for letting me hop on the call and it's great to see you guys. And um, yeah, have a great rest of your call. Hey, real quick before you go, Todd, anything you want to ask Kristen or any thoughts you have on that? 
Well, I just got to be on a panel with Chris and it was like the highlight of my trip to Tampa. Like they put me on this media mogul panel. I was totally out of place, but it was a blast to, uh, to see you there and, and be part of that. You know, I just think it's a challenge, right? You talk about how does a loan officer integrate this? And so, you know, you said that was missing from these presentations. What, you know, you obviously travel and speak a lot. So what, what advice would you have to the LO who's worried about, okay, I got all these 25 things or even five things my company does to learn it if their company's not taking that leadership? I think the big thing is just a, oh, wait. So the question was, how do you communicate those things or how do you communicate those things to their leadership on what to how about either of those, whichever one you were about to answer? Okay. Well, I was going to say just whenever you're thinking about uh, like anything that has a lot of choices to, or things that you want to communicate, I tend to try to just talk as fast as I can and cover all the things. And, uh, but one of the things I've actually learned from Renee and, um, and just in speaking is that people don't listen when you do that. And so if you are going to, you, you need to just demonstrate empathy to your audience. And so by connecting over the things that they value and, um, and communicating the, the, the perspective of the, um, whichever audience you're choosing, whether it's the borrower or if you're communicating to executives in your company, it's the, you know, their uh, bottom line or whatever it is, but then choose the specific features that are going to support that, um, that overall outcome. I love that. That reminds me, I just made a post note that says slow down. So yeah, so I talk slower. Oh, me too. I got it. I should put that across my computer as well. But yeah, um, Todd, it was awesome to see you at the conference in Tampa, Women with Vision, and so fun to sit with, a, with you on a panel as well. And I love every, oh, and the win by noon, I'm constantly thinking about that. That's so catchy. I've got my green smoothie here. And as I was making it, I was thinking, when by noon today? <laughs> All right. Well, I should have given you one of these, right? Every day is for winning by noon. Oh, yes. I love it. <laughs> well, okay, I, I have one in my, in my backpack, Kristen. So next time you see me, okay, I, I've got win by noon stickers and mortgage coach stickers, everybody. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. See you All guys. Right, cool. All right. Take it easy, Kristen. Thanks. So, so Todd, man, it's just you and me for 20 minutes. You think we can come up with something to talk about? You know, I think so. You know, I think so. It's funny because I got, I've got literally a, a full page of notes and I, I love where she said at the end is you had to really talk about the empathy, right? By connecting over what they value. And I think that that's regardless of what seat they're in, right? She said, you got to think about their perspective. So if you think about it, right, Renee sort of talked about your story and how it matters. And then you transition with Kristen talking about um, what she just went through with this digital judging that she did at the digital uh, conference and how she was judging the folks who were trying to communicate their product to them as judges. And then she talked about this gap of where they actually didn't do a good job of educating and integrating. And I think that, you know, as a person who's listening to this call, think about it. How does that, how does that impact you? How does that apply to you? And where can you use that literally when you get off this phone today on your next conversation, whether it's with a team member who's struggling, whether it's with a borrower, whether it's with your boss, um, I, there was just so much gold there, Dave. I don't even know. Uh, I don't even know which which other place to start. Well, I mean, there's one thing that I am for sure about is the the empathy. You know, we talk a lot about what Amazon and Zillow can't do. We need to do, and and that is where you know when you're local and you live off of referrals, you can show up with a greater level of empathy. You can show up with asking better questions. If you I, and I highly recommend you guys listen to the black belt series that I'm doing because I'm really trying to break down what are the skills and moves precisely and specifically that differentiate a white belt loan officer from a black belt mortgage advisor. You know, so what are those things and, and questions? There are black belt questions. And then of course, you know, like anything in any martial arts, there's like, hey, knowing how to block and then there's getting so good at it that you can beat anybody and getting so good at it that it's just a reflex. Um, you know, that's why I love this, you know, these metaphors to becoming a black belt, you know, get great at it. But there's, there's just questions. So I, I, I didn't write it down, but when Kristen said that, I just like mic drop, you know, that's like, <laughs> that is the path to crushing it. Well, I mean, think about it though, right? Renee said the challenge is we all have stories, but we don't slow down to listen. And I think it's like asking better questions and listening go hand in hand, right? Kristen said, you've got to be able to look at it from their perspective. And if you're not listening to what their top concerns are, then how can you shift gears as a loan officer to the story that's going to support that and, and share that empathy? I, I've been sharing a lot lately. I've been training my brother-in-law for 
a little over four months now in the mortgage business. And he comes from the restaurant business. And the, the interesting thing is, is that he's got a heart to serve, right? He was, he was in a quick serve restaurant. He trained uh, people who would fly in from all over the world to, to lead and open restaurants literally all over the world, Mexico City, Dubai, all sorts of places. And the interesting thing about it is, is he doesn't know anything about loans yet. He's, he's actually dangerous because he doesn't know anything, but he connects so well with people with empathy by just asking better questions because I've taught him if he tries to solve their problems with his little bit of knowledge that he's just going to go um, totally to crash and burn. And by listening better and then asking better questions, he's able to say, uh, with his magic script is that's a great question let me let me find out the answer and call you back so that he doesn't do that thing of making something up but uh, i think empathy is such a key because I, he is out producing a lot of loan officers i know after four months just because he's connected so well um and then being willing to slow down and, and I, I think that when kristen said that at the very end i agree with you that was sort of the mic drop moment where she tied everything that we talked about for the previous 35 minutes together and um, i just know that there's something if you slow down and rewatch the beginning of this now, there's something that you can implement today in your uh, habits, right? You know, in your listening skills and in your, uh, in your questions to your clients so that you can actually then think, okay, what's the story I need to create going forward in order to empathize with them? Because um, what Renee said was so powerful that you don't have to have been, you know, grown up on food stamps in order to empathize with someone who's struggling to come up with a down payment for their first home. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, you have to listen and figure out how do I take that story I just heard and turn it into something. Which yeah, I think you're no right. doubt. So, so guys, um, we've got about 15 minutes. There's a lot of different directions we could go. Um, you know, when I did my panel this year, it was on, you know, how to, whoops, how to be razor sharp on a thin margin. So this was, you know, what I talked about this year. And, and last year, it was, you know, when I did what I did at, at um, Digital Mortgage, it was, it was really just all about that technology as a competitive advantage, and the loan offs who, who master it are going to win biggest. So if you do have questions on your tech stack, um, I am happy to try to, like, put them in, in Facebook, put them in, in uh, Zoom, and we'll answer those. Also, I am going to be doing a full debrief on digital. I'm going to interview Kristen, uh, uh, Julian Hibberon, Garth Graham, you know, some of the people that I think are the, the top tech visionaries in the mortgage industry. So any questions you have about tech stack, um, put them down below. If we have time before this hour is over, I will answer some of those. And I am going to be doing a full interview um, that is my debrief from Digital Mortgage 2019 and what I think it means to referral-based loan officers for 2020. So stay tuned for that. Um, so Todd, any, any topics you want to bring, any takeaways you have from uh, the event you were at this week? Yeah, I mean, I would, I would throw a couple things out there. My first thought always is whenever you th throw up your slides from one of your recent presentations, I'm like, man, I wish I was there. Like you always, um, it's such a gift when you share some of those presentations because I know that they're oftentimes designed for C-suite or designed for people in different uh, roles than most of the people who are on this call. But I believe that there's just always so much value in all of that. So I uh, always appreciate uh, that piece of it. You know, it was interesting. Um, the, it was the Vision Success Vision Conference. I'm like getting a botching that I should know since I was, I was there. And it was just a really great, uh, you know, a, a great new conference. It was on the East Coast and they had a lot of really powerful um, folks show up. And they had a big women's focus. They gave out uh, Women of Vision Awards, which I was uh, super proud to have Win by Noon be part of as a dad of three daughters. And um, and I got to uh, present to Jen Duplessis uh, her awards. That was kind of cool uh, as, a, as, the, as the leader. But, um, you know, it was really interesting to hear people talk because they had all different um, folks get up and talk from different ways. Like, I don't know Jay Doran very well. It's the first time I saw him and he talked about, did a live podcast with the Shred Guys and Christine Beckwith on how to be transparent and tell your story. So kind of what Renee talked about. So as I'm hearing some replaying that, that conversation and hearing Renee, you know, that really sunk in. I mean, there's other people out there that are doing those things in order to be, um, you know, super uh, intentional around what they're doing. Um, folks got up on stage. I presented on how to execute. In fact, I'm doing a webinar on it next week. If you just go to the winbynoon.com forward slash calendar, I'm talking about how to take ideas from a call like this, or in that case, it was really from the, from the conference and then how to execute with a tool that I created and gave away. So I'll, I'll uh, make sure I post it here in the community so people have it. Um, and I kind of think that that was the other common theme. People kept talking about, well, here's what I'm doing and here's why it works. Um, people talked about 
um, you know, here was this unique thing that I've, you know, that I've implemented. Here's how I've become the expert of my area. I met a real estate panel who also talked about those things and talked about social media on the social media panel. I mean, people did talk about all the things that we've talked about over this past year and their experience and how they've, um, how they've executed on it. So this execution thing became, you know, a big theme. And I find that here you are, you're sitting here either watching this live or you're watching recording this call. And then I feel like people struggle with how do I then implement and take this? And we've got, you know, here we are, it's the last Friday of Q3 of 2019. And I always think my worry is that people are super busy. I've talked to a lot of loan officers that this last 90 days was their best 90 days ever in the mortgage business. And ironically, the next 90 days isn't looking quite as good because they fell off a lot of their habits and they didn't really plan to get to where they're trying to go. And so, you know, my takeaway always is, right, when I put on my coach's hat is how do you start today, right? Don't worry about yesterday or even this morning before this call. How do you start today to make a difference as you head into Q4? Because I think that's always the challenge, Dave. We're here every Friday. You also have your Tuesday call and you're giving so much value, so many ideas. And then people are like, well, what do I do with them, right? Analysis, paralysis, kind of get stuck. And so I think it's just a matter of, of really getting clear on that and figuring out implementation. So um, I guess I wasn't planning on going down that route, but I did. So I don't know what your thoughts no, are. It's a, well, well, it's a good route. And the thing that came to my mind when you said that this is the last weekend in Q3 and the kickoff Q4, um, did you know that? Like, like if you're on this call and you're like, yeah, I knew that, then you know what? You are probably being very proactive with your planning. You, you probably have either a life plan or a business plan that you're reviewing. Um, and you're, you're planning like a black belt. But if you're like, oh, yeah, I, didn't even, I forgot that it's the end of Q3 or I didn't even know that maybe you're not being as intentional as you could be about planning for success and about, you know, there's black belt with mortgage coach, there's black belt with win by nip, you know, and, and, and I do believe I am a massive advocate for the win by noon planner, the win by noon mission and philosophy um, and everything that it represents. So I just ask everybody as we, we knuckle down for Q4, if you didn't know that, then you probably don't have the rhythms that you, you could, you should have to crush it. Um, so I, I like that. That's one thing I thought of. One thing I wanted to make sure I hit before the call is out is I can't remember the, who it was that made a post and it was a great post. Someone was asking about page five. Um, I interviewed Craig Strett on Tuesday, incredible interview, $50 million producer. who's also CEO of a mortgage company who, kills it with financial planners. And, you know, one of the things that he was talking about was how he identifies the planners that he does business with from existing customers. And it, it brought up the whole page five, like, okay, does anybody, someone asked, does anybody have a form? And I just want to remind you guys that we have this little file section in our group. And in that file section, there's a lot of incredible documents. So one, I would recommend for anyone that's active in the mortgage coach community, spend five minutes, click on files, and just kind of skim through there and go, hmm, anything that could help me with what I'm working on right now. And notice that there is a page five here. Also want to remind you, um, I think I commented to that person and I said, hey, you could do a search. Um, actually, I don't know if it's going to come up because the page five, um, you can see here, doesn't have a space. And I'm going to type in page five. So it may not show up. But I do want to remind you guys that the search feature in this group is super powerful. And while that specific document may not come up, every conversation that had to do with page five will come up. So, you know, if there's ever um, something you're looking for, whether it's to improve your process, your systems, um, you know, use the feature in our group search and um, check out this files feature. There's a lot of power in there, guys. Um, Todd, anything to add to that? I was just a little bit nervous because because it was on there right below your page five. There's one called Making Love. I'm not quite sure who updated that or what it is. So maybe don't check that one out. And maybe I'm not sure. But um, yeah, you know, it was kind of interesting. So, you know, it, it go back on, on, my, uh, on my tangent, right? I love the fact that people watched Trent's video talking about how to work with financial advisors. And then we've had multiple people ask in the community, hey, where do I find that in the community, right? That's the power of our community. And that's someone who, who watched something invested time and is now executing. And I think it's really critical. I was talking to my business partner this morning and he's like, oh, I'm on my way to school. 
and uh, his kids go to school where my kids went to school. And he's like, I have a, a teacher conference. It's our goal planning meeting. So I'm like, all right, well, remind me, how old are your kids again? And, and I, I, I thought I knew, and I was right, they're six and nine. And he's got a six-year-old and a nine-year-old where they're sitting down with their teacher to talk about what their goals are for the rest of the year, right? So for Q4, here are kids in school writing down their goals, and then they've got someone to help hold them accountable. And so, again, you've got to figure out how to get the ideas out of your head that you've been learning, that you've been holding back, and get that get that written goal. And for those of you who crushed it last quarter, your best quarter ever, if you have a written goal, you might need to up it, right? So that you don't just hit the the kind of the snooze button for the rest of the year and just kind of finish on a, on a thud instead of finish on, you know, the high note that you just came off on this last quarter. Um, but, you know, I love, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to go off on that making love tangent. I just threw me off. Well, no, I mean, it's, a, it's a good little tangent. I'm going to actually play off of that. Cause I, Oh, that's I the one you posted. Okay. All right. Now it makes sense. Yeah. I was like, cause I saw that, I saw that post, but I didn't know that that was the, well, that I'm, was the I'm crowd. Gonna, I'm going to, I'm going to go through this post with you guys. And, um, and really, you know, make a comment. But I mean, here's, and I, instead of saying, I'm a great lover, I'm going to say, I'm a great loan officer, or I'm a great realtor. You know, that's marketing. Uh, you know, calling people, you know, and saying, I'm a great mortgage professional. That's selling, telemarketing. Uh, public relations, when someone else says, trust me, he's a good loan officer. Uh, that's PR. Um, advertising, just repeating yourself over and over and over. Um, Graphic design, I love this one, just a little heart. And then the punchline, when someone that you're talking with goes, I hear you're a great loan officer, or I hear that you deliver a total cost analysis, that's branding. So I, anyway, I thought this was just a great picture that tells a story around what's the difference between selling, marketing, and branding. And, and you know, it's one of the reasons why I bring so many people to tell the personal branding story because at the end of the day, if you have a lot of people in your local market and in your sphere of influence that they think of you as this trusted advisor, like, wow, you're a trusted advisor. The more people that think of you like that, the more you don't have to worry about the disruption that's taking place in the mortgage industry. The more you don't have to worry about whether rates go up, whether rates go down. You've got to build that brand to where hundreds, thousands of families that want to build wealth with real estate they think it'd be that way. So anyway, it's good image, nice little segue, Todd. And uh, for anybody that has any confusion on what brand, what's the difference between branding and selling, hopefully uh, we've dispelled that. You, you have complete clarity now. Well, and I think the key is how do you get to that bottom right quadrant, right? How do you get to the part where someone perceives that about you? And that's really what we heard from Renee and Kristen, right? It's telling your story. It's doing what they talked about, going onto social media and talking that way. Um, it's educating your referral partners on who you are and how you do business so that they sell you the way that you want to be sold to their, their referrals to you. Cause in the end, if you're that first, that telemarketer one, I think is what most people are, right? We get a client on the phone and we show up and throw up all over them way too much before we ask those questions um, about what's important to them and then turn it around and then do your edgy selling that you talk about Dave and, and you're there. Yeah. Yeah. The formula everyone is story strategy, leadership you know control the conversation and manage the relationship so guys we are seven minutes ago you, know, you know todd and i can literally talk um right up until the minute but if you guys don't have questions todd i am leaning towards either passing the torch to you for any closing thoughts or wrap it up a few minutes early but do we have any questions from anybody that have been unanswered they're all super quiet today um let me go pe peek back and chat someone just said where do you find the black belt series can you let everyone know it I think I know the answer, but. Yeah, I, thank you for asking that question, by the way. That's a very good question. Uh, so there I'm is a playlist in our kind of group. Uh, so let me show you how to find those. You know, maybe just give you guys a little tour of the Mortgage Coach YouTube page. So this is the most recent one. Uh, Craig Strat. So it'll be the most recent interview that I've done. And, and one tip for everyone, if you are serious about this community, is make sure that you, you like and you get alerts when new um, videos show up. So every time a new video comes up, you'll get an alert if you subscribe to our channel. Uh, so there, there is a playlist. I, I didn't put it on the cover page like I have some others, but there is a playlist and it's called MC Black Belt. Maybe I should make that plural, MC Black Belts. 
but that's it. There's a, just go to our playlist series and you'll see, I've got two interviews. I'm going to do at least a dozen of these and then I'm going to see if it feels repetitive, but I just want to make sure that the, the framework I'm putting together on what is a mortgage coach black belt. Um, I want to interview black belts. I want to run it by them. I want to make sure I'm being as um, all encompassing as possible. And just a couple, couple reminders, you know, this is a white belt. If all you're doing when you meet with the family is delivering monthly payment, interest rates, and closing costs, you are a white belt. Uh, and, and, and I'm not saying that this is black belt, but these are the moves to where you start delivering something. And you can at least say I'm an advisor. Like, I really don't think if all you're doing is delivering monthly payment rate and cash flows, you are a mortgage advisor. Um, no, you are delivering a transactional experience. But if you show the cost over time, you know, five years, three years, seven years, what does this mean to you in 20 years? That's an advisor move. And, and if you're showing prepay strategies, like, hey, what if you did this refi and you prepaid the mortgage? Or what if you put less down and you invested it? You know, you start showing financial strategies outside of the mortgage. These are the keys to being a mortgage advisor. Um, so the black belt goes way beyond that. Um, and I'm going to be breaking that down, but hopefully, you know, here's two great interviews. They're both 21, 23 minutes. Check them out. Hopefully that question's answered. Anything else, Scott? Well, I just think it's, you know, we talked about it. Like, let's, let's go back. Let's watch this video again and let's learn how to listen better and tell a better story. Because I think just, you know, for those of you who, who can't make the time, or can't afford to go to Amplify, right? Renee just laid out for you and then Kristen kind of put the, you know, the exclamation point on the end, how to, how to implement in, that into your business. And then, you know, just know, I mean, our goal here is to make this about you guys. So, you know, be sure to be asking questions. Dave and I monitor this. So if you've got questions after the fact, you know, we'll get pinged. So let us, you know, let us know. And then, you know, as I said earlier, I'm going to be running a bunch of webinars as we head into uh, next, uh, next quarter, right through win by noon. And you don't have to be a win by noon user to jump on those. I've just got a lot of webinars. I think that'll help you guys implement. That's my focus for, uh, the next month is how to help people actually plan and implement going into Q4. And so, you know, any of you who want to jump on, I'll throw the link down below. So it's, so it's in here, but I would love to have you guys on. Cause in the end, um, my goal and Dave's goal is to make all of you in this community better. That's why we're here uh, doing this. Plus, plus it's fun. I get to, I love hanging out with Dave every Friday. I love hanging out with you, brother. So also guys, make sure you're aware of the win by noon Facebook group. Uh, subscribe to that. Just type in win by noon into um, Facebook and be part of that um, private Facebook group. And it's, that's a place that's all about effective planning, productivity, tracking your results, winning by noon. Um, check that out. Uh, it's a, everybody I know that does it is more successful because of it. Uh, Todd, anything before we close it out? Um, well, that'd be the win by noon user mastermind group. So that would be the, the best one to, to look for. But obviously, if you want to like win by noon, our business page as well, we would, we would love that. But you know, I just think Dave, in the end, um, you know, as always, you brought great guests on as always, they delivered really high, really high content. And, you know, I think that we've got um, someone wants us to repeat the website. Okay, I'll go ahead and type it in here. Um, win by noon.com or win by so win by noon.com. That is the website for win by noon. Sign up, get on the team if you're not already. And win by noon user group is what you would search into Facebook. So check it out. So guys, if you are watching the recording and you have questions, put comments, questions down below. If you got value from today's conversation, give us a like, um, share this with your mortgage friends. Uh, let us know any topics you want. Fridays are all just free for them. You know, based off of the week, and the conversations that Ty and I have in the market, we bring topics. And based off of the conversations and the posts in our Facebook group, we shine a light on those. So uh, Todd Bookspan, thank you, brother. I look forward to hopefully seeing you soon. I don't know when we're going to, oh, Sales Mastery. Sales Mastery. We'll see you in three weeks. See you exactly. in three weeks, man. Oh, it's in our happy hour there. So that'll be a lot of fun. So um, as always, thanks everyone for being here. Appreciate uh, everyone taking the time. Appreciate you, Dave, for your leadership as always. Take care, brother. This call is a wrap. Bye, everybody.